There you are. I hope. <laughs> There you are. Great. <laughs> well, you closed for a while and I thought, oh, are you working on that for a long time? And then I realized you haven't moved, so. <laughs> oh, whoops. <laughs> uh, I was starting to worry a little bit. <laughs> okay, we actually are broadcasting, so we're live. Okay. Hi. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, hello, everybody. Welcome to Cake Food. We will uh, go ahead and get started in just a second. I wanted to just uh, explain how things work really fast. I did see in our little chat box that there are some newbies. So welcome to everybody that's new here. Uh, you should be able to see on the top of your screen uh, a picture that says uh, Cake Food Master Series Presents Sharon Wee. Uh, and then down below that, you should be able to see a chat, uh, kind of an ask a question chat box. Uh, for those of you that have been here before, we've actually combined the chat box and ask a question all together in one. So there's, uh, there's just one spot there down below. Uh, Sharon, you won't see that because you have a different screen. And then, uh, so if you want to, Sharon, just click on the, the window that says the Cake Food Master Series Presents. It will bring that up for you and you'll be able to see that. Oh, wow, perfect. So, okay, and then um, hopefully everybody can see things going. If uh, you can't, hopefully you'll just hit the refresh button and see things that way. And I think we are ready to go. So we'll pause for just a second and then we'll get started. Hi everybody, welcome to our Cake Food Master Series. Uh, we're really excited to be having a training today. Um, it's at a different time because our, our guest today is all the way from Singapore. <laughs> so we're really, really excited to have Sharon today with us. Welcome, Sharon. Thank you. Welcome. Yeah. Um, so it's pretty early in the morning there for you, isn't it? Yeah, it's like 6.30 in the morning. <laughs> a little bit early. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty darn early. Thank you for, you know, being willing to get up so early to do this for us. That's all right. Thank you for having me. Perfect. All right. We are um, going to just go ahead and we'll start. We'll talk about you a little bit and, um, and then we'll get moving on to everything else. Uh, and we, we are doing a couple of new things. Hope you guys all uh, appreciate the, you know, what, what, we're, what we have today. Um, just so that you know, again, there isn't a chat box on the right-hand side. It's all down on the bottom. And that is also the Ask a Question spot. So if you have questions for Sharon throughout the training, make sure that you go down there and type those questions down there. And we'll, we'll read from the questions uh, towards the end. Okay. So let's talk about you, Sharon. <laughs> okay, let's start off with... Um, where you're from and, and how you got started in the cake decorating? Um, I'm originally from Singapore, but I've been living in Sydney for about 13 years now. Uh, and I started cake decorating almost by accident. So I had finished university and got my first full-time job as a marketing assistant. My boss wasn't very nice. She wasn't the nicest person. And, you know, it was not very nice. It wasn't a very nice introduction to the working life. And I thought you know, is this what life is about, you know, nine to five and being all depressed and sad about going to work the next day. And I wanted to find 
something to look forward to or a hobby. So I signed up for a cake decorating class because I always enjoyed baking, but I liked artsy things. So I signed up for a class and then absolutely loved it. Got obsessed, and you know, back in back in those days, I think about six, seven years ago, there wasn't. I think YouTube wasn't around, or there wasn't much on there. So. I learned a lot through CakeCentral.com and you know a lot of stuff online through Americans because um, that's where you know a lot of the cake decorating came from at that time. And then from there, you know, played around a little bit. And then when people started teaching more classes in Australia, um, got a chance to do more classes there. And then about three years ago, I decided to quit my job to do this full time. So it's been almost yeah, it's been almost three years now. So it's been really exciting. Well, good, awesome. And so you um, recently have a crafty class that has come out. Yeah. And this is actually your second, is that right? Yeah, the fondant animals. The first one is the castle cake. So in there, you know, we learn to do the castle, and then we also learn to do two different variations. So not only the princess one, but the medieval version, as well as like a sandcastle version. And um, the new one is, is the fondant animals. And I think the training that we're going to do today kind of complements it as well. That's great. Awesome. Yeah. We are actually going to talk about uh, your crafty, cl crafty class a little bit later on. And in sure. fact, we're going to be giving away one of your classes. So, oh, from fantastic. Me. Yay. That'll be fun. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, back to you a little bit. Um, you, you say that uh, you, you live in Australia mm -hmm. um, and you just travel to you know, other places. Do you do you go back to Singapore often more you know more than other places or Yeah, mostly because I started teaching here first um, because my parents are still here, and I usually come back at least once or twice a year. I try to at least because that's kind of another home base for me. So it's nice to be able to have a home away from home as such. Are you there? Yes. Oh, there we go. Okay, so it says on your on your list of things about you that you sent me, it says uh, that you miss the coffee most in Australia. Yeah. Um, I miss the coffee a lot. I didn't realize how much, like, how different it was until I started drinking coffee a couple of years ago. And I don't want to sound like a coffee snob, but I feel that the coffee in Australia tastes a lot better because I've been looking everywhere for good coffee and I haven't found it yet, especially in Asia or anywhere else, so I love my coffee in the morning. Oh, that's, very <laughs> that's very interesting. Okay. All right. Um, and then says, uh, it annoys me when, when people I know say they're sorry, uh, but the cake they lovingly made for their friend, sister, son, daughter, partner is never gone. Oh, it annoy oh, the, theirs aren't going to be as good as yours. Yeah. So sometimes I feel like they, they feel like they have to apologize just because I'm in the room. They're like, oh, I'm sorry, you know, it's never going to be as good. And it's like, it doesn't have to be, you know. I do it as a profession, and, you know, you're doing it out of love. And that, I think that's what's more important is the effort and the thoughts behind it more than anything. And, you know, people shouldn't feel the need to apologize just because you know, they haven't done it as good as someone else, I guess, if they're, especially when they're doing it for a loved one. So don't feel bad and that's don't really, feel sorry. That's a good point. Yeah. That's a really good point. I like that. Okay. Um, and then the best advice you can give to somebody, what would that be? It would be, especially for a cake decorator, is never stop learning. Um, I see a lot of people, or a lot of students rather, who are really afraid of doing things. You know, they're like, oh, I really want to try this cake, but I don't know how to do it. I'm really scared. And I think the point is not to be scared, because after all, at the end of the day, it is cake, and you can just try. You know, if you buy the tools and materials and just, you know, take a day or two out and sit there and work it out, and you'll realize it's not so scary after all, you know, and never stop learning as well. Um, I don't think you'll ever ever finish learning so you know always try and go to classes or 
find something new and it doesn't have to be a cake decorating class it could be an art class you know a flower arranging class or anything that you know still encourages your creativity I think it's really important that's very true well and, and cake decorating is constantly evolving you know and there's always new techniques and new everything I, I mean I, I actually have some cake uh, dummies and stuff that I that I just threw away recently because they don't have the, the straight you know corner crisp edges that that is so popular now and so I just these are outdated they're not you know and it's just from a, a couple of years ago you know so everything's constantly changing and and there's always something to learn so you're you're absolutely right just have yeah. to you know, keep working, keep learning, and, and keep up with everything. <laughs> yeah, keep up. And even, you know, when you join, like, online forums or online groups, it's, you know, getting getting to know each other and helping each other across the world because the way we do things in Australia is completely different to the way America does it or London does it, And you know, by being able to share, which is really cool now that we have inter the Internet and, you know, like, Facebook and all these communities, it's it's really great, you know, to learn all these new skills and techniques and methods of doing things. Yeah, that's it is very true, and that's what you know. That's what we're all about here at Cake Foo, and that's what Crafty is all about. And you know, you yeah. have your uh, Facebook group, right? Yeah, your Facebook that you have quite the following on, so that's great. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, today we're going to learn about a um, how to do a figure sculpting piece that that Sharon has put together. It's so real, so cute. <laughs> Thank you. So we're going to just jump right into that, and then after after this is all done, we will go through some questions, um, and then at the at the end we'll do a giveaway for Sharon's crafts class, which will be great, uh, and then. Um, I guess we'll we'll just go ahead and, and move right into the the little picture tutorial part and have um, Sharon walk us through everything. Oh, and oh, here's a picture of your uh, cake Happy. topper on the yeah. animals. Crafty yeah. class. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so it's got my signature lovebirds on there as well, and I created those maybe almost three years ago, and they've been on everything, like wedding cakes, christening cakes everything and everyone's been asking me how to do them and things like that so now here's your chance <laughs> you get to learn how to make them on a video as well so perfect and they're so cute thank you <laughs> and I love the little bunny and the, the pink plane in the mud oh, they're, they're all adorable thank you <laughs> so these are really cute and so you show how to make these and then the yeah. little support inside of it and all of that yeah, and I break down all, all the animals except for the birds into um, basic shapes. So they're all derived from those kind of basic shapes that once you master, you'll be able to make, you know, a whole bunch of different animals as well. Awesome. Well, great. I think that's a really good class to, to check yeah. out. Okay. And we will go ahead and, and um, let you go from here and just walk us through. Okay, so we're going to be making a cute little monkey, and because this monkey is a little bit on the bigger side and his head is big, um, I have used styrofoam. So I've used basic shapes that you can find in an art store, a styrofoam ball and an egg. You can see the ball is bigger than the egg, and the ball is for the head, um, but that's because I want the head to be big. So we can go to the next slide. Yeah. Okay. It's fun to have the, the bigger heads. It makes them look more... I think it makes look really cute. Yeah. Yep. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yep. So what I said, the length of the um, egg should be almost the same size. Um, so with the because with the shapes, I wanted the monkey to kind of sit at an angle. Um, I didn't want him to sit straight up. So I have cut um, the tip of the egg shape at an angle. Okay. Yep. And um, the ball, I have just cut a little bit flat, and this is so I can join the two pieces together. So you can see here they kind of fit together. Um, don't worry if they don't fit exactly together because we can patch back up that remaining seam with some fondant. So, Okay. So you can see the angle of that, the egg shape. Mm -hmm. And so you'll also need to put a toothpick between both the head and the body so that they stick together. 
and you apply hot glue to each end of the toothpick and you stick them together. Okay, great. And can this be done with fondant or gum paste also? Possibly if you're doing it smaller, it's not a problem, but because this is a little bit larger. If you're doing it with fondant and gum paste, I'd probably let the head dry a little bit um, before you do the body. Okay. Or you know you could always make it out of make the shape out of gum paste first and just let it dry like that shape that you've got on screen and let it dry for a couple of days before you cover it with fondant. Okay. Um, I've also inserted a skewer into the bottom of where the bum is going to be sitting on the cake so that it can the monkey can be inserted into the cake so it's not just balancing on top. Okay. Perfect. And then now here with that neck part because it is quite skinny. Um, if it's really skinny, it's actually quite hard to cover. So I've fattened it up a little bit, I guess, with a little bit of fondant. So you just roll and you wrap it around with a little bit of water. And then in the next slide, you'll see that, yeah, it gets blended in. So you just use your fingers and you just dip it in a bit of water and you just blend it in. Okay, so with water. Yeah. Okay. Would you, would you ever want to use like a shortening or, or anything like yeah, that? Actually you can as well. Yeah, that's not a problem. Whatever it is that can, that prevents your hand from sticking to the fondant so that it can blend into the um, styrofoam. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. I've actually never heard of the water thing, so that's cool. Yeah. Um, so I, with styrofoam, I always use piping jelly because it doesn't, or piping gel, yeah, piping jelly you guys call in the U.S. Um, so it doesn't um, dry off as fast because if you use water on styrofoam, it beads off and it actually dries off quite quickly. So the piping jelly um, is actually quite sticky. If you don't have that, you can always use jam. So not the stuff, not the jam with, with pieces in it, but just jam to, that, to, to stick it on. So I rolled the fondant so it's a little bit, um, a little bit thicker and um, I'm going to cover it. So th at this stage, if you use a lot of like icing sugar or corn flour when you're rolling out your fondant, it's going to be really difficult to blend in the seams. So as much as you can, try not to use um, too much of those those black corn flours or icing sugar. Okay, that's a very good tip. Yeah. So wrap it around, and you'll notice that I wrapped with all the seams. It's kind of like a ravioli or a dumpling. So I wrapped with all the seams at the front. I want all the seams at the front because that's where his belly piece and his face piece is going to go, so most of the seams will get hidden. Um, if You can also wrap it at the back and no one will see it as well. So. Okay. Yeah, so now using scissors, you just want to cut off the axis. So you can see that I've cut it off flush against the, um, against the styrofoam piece. If you don't cut it off flush and, once you, and you try and blend in the seams, you're going to get lumps, so you're going to get your monkey that's kind of round and then he's got a lump here. So you want to cut it as flat as possible. Okay, perfect. And then with hands, um, I just blend in. So I hold the skewer closer to um, the monkey's bottom. And then from there, I use that as a support while I use my hands to rub. So when you use your hands, you want to use this part of your hand. And I'm just using the warmth and the pressure to rub the seams away. Okay. And you'll yeah, and you'll find in the next picture, if your hands are warm enough and if you work quickly enough, you'll get most of the seams gone. Um, the only time that you'll find that, you know, the seams don't really join properly is when you've either got too much corn flour, icing sugar, or um, if the fondant has already started to dry out. Yeah, but you can see that it's pretty much, pretty much gone. You, you Almost, yeah. Everything. So, that's good. Okay. And so then I use it for the belly piece. I just use the circle cutter and I cut out a piece of ivory fondant. And then I just roll it a little bit with a rolling pin to stretch it into an oval shape. Mm -hmm. And then we stick it on to the belly of the monkey. And then I'm using my thumbs, you can see along the side, just to smooth and flatten down the edges a little bit so it doesn't look so so much like a, just another piece stuck on. Mm -hmm. It looks like it's part of the body. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it. And then for the head, same thing, large circle cutter. So here I am just measuring the um, size of the circle cutter that I need. Okay. And is there like a something to look for to gauge that by? What, 
Um, usually, I think with this one, what I did was I made sure that it was just slightly bigger than the head because with the circle cutter, if you make it, like if you hold it there and you go, oh, it looks just right, it tends to be too small because um, the monkey's head is, an, is around, so when it bends around, it becomes too small. So I always try and look for one a little bit bigger. Oh, good. Good to yeah. know. Right. And so I rolled it a little bit thicker because I want his like his face to come out a little bit from his head. Okay. And then I used little scissors to cut out the V-shape of his forehead. And then in the next side you'll see I cut out the little his little cheeks as well. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then you want to do it on both sides and then you get that shape and anything that is sharp, I just use my fingers to soften the edges. Okay, so just go around the outside with your finger and smooth it all out? Yeah, all you need to do is basically just tap, tap, tap. You don't need to rub too much. If you just tap, most of the time it goes away. Okay. So stick it on to the front of the head. And actually at this stage, if you wanted him facing left or right, you can adjust it. So. With this guy, he was facing forward, which is why I stuck him to the front. But if you wanted him to look left or right, then you can change the positioning of that face piece. Very nice. So this is where you would add in any of the uh, character of you know, him. Yeah, this is where he starts coming together, yeah. Okay. All right. And then draw the smiles. So I use a frilling tool too. Mark the smile gently first to see how I like the positioning. Um, if you're not so confident being able to do this freehand, you can always use the edge of a circle cutter. So you can use the edge of a circle cutter and just press to indent to, to get the smile. Mm -hmm. That's a very cute smile. <laughs> and then I use an X-Acto knife to cut along the smile just to make it a little bit deeper. And then, again, I use the frilling tool just to mark the edges to give him little dimples. Okay. And then, same thing, I just go back again just to widen his little smile a little bit. And you can see now because of the exacto knife, how it's made a cut, it opens up and makes it just that little bit deeper. That's nice. And then his little nose, I just poke, <laughs> poke with the frilling tool. He's starting to come together. Yeah. And then for his legs, I've rolled, you know, a teardrop shape, a fondant, and I've pushed it up a little bit to create a P shape or more like, you know, a golf club shape, and then just flatten it. So you can see that little rounded P shape that's actually going to be his thigh. Okay. So is, there, is there any kind of a tip that you give for, you know, making, because, you know, you have to do two legs and two arms and two hands. Mm -hmm. Is there, is there anything that you can tell everyone what, what to do as far as, you know, getting them both the same, On the right side, side. same shape? And I, I think that's a challenge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. I mean, the, the, the thing I usually do is, like, if I'm making two legs, is I'll grab two pieces of fondant and I'll put them side by side first, like, as a ball, to see if they're the right size before I get started. Um, and then especially... Like, if I'm doing hands, then I'll grab the ball, like, two, two more balls at the same time just to make sure they're a little bit smaller or a little bit bigger depending on what I need them to be. Mm -hmm. um, if you're really OCD, you can weigh them <laughs> to make sure that they're perfect. And then you'll, you'll know for sure that it's, it's all good. <laughs> good. Okay. Sounds good. So then I've used the frilling tool to make a little bit of an indentation um, down that side just to look like his leg is bending up because it is. Right. So we've stuck him on and then we're going to do the same for the other side. Okay. It looks like you've got two little lines for the indentations. Is that something you did for both sides? Uh, no, I think what ended up happening is when I stuck it on and moved it up, it bended a little bit more. Oh, so okay. Yeah, you, I mean, you can. You can make two lines if you like, um, or you can leave it as one. Yeah. Okay. I think it looks cute that way. <laughs> yeah. And then the other side. Okay. And then his little feet. So they're just little teardrop shapes. 
and then um, I've bent it slightly so you can see again they form that little P shape or that little golf club shape. Mm -hmm. And then we stick it on. Okay. And then for the arms, I rolled a long teardrop shape. Um, and then I flattened the ends so it's it's more of a cone shape. Okay. And then I've used the frilling tool to kind of um, dig and create an indent for the hand. So all you want to do is stick it in. And then usually I just twist it a little bit so it creates kind of like a divot. Oh, okay. And is that other little ball, is that for the other arm? Yeah. Okay. And I create the divot so that the hands can sit inside because if you notice that with the feet they're sitting directly on top of the, the leg so it's okay but with the hands because they need to hold on to something um, they need to be anchored in into the arm piece. Um, so for the hands um, I rolled two teardrops again and then flattened slightly and all I've done is cut a little V so you're cutting this V out so that you've kind of got little mittens and you'll notice that you know it is a teardrop shape so that little peak at the end where it's a teardrop shape will go into the divot of the hand. Okay, And that's what will attach. Yeah. I think that's a really good way to attach you know little pieces like that that otherwise might might fall. Yeah, so well, there, there is attached. So I've just put a little bit of water and just attached it in there. Okay. Do you always use water to attach things, or do you? Mostly, yeah. So you see, in the previous picture, I've got my water brush, which I love, um, and that's pretty much all I use. I hardly use sugar glue or anything like that unless I'm dealing with flowers. Yeah. So my little blue water brush there. Okay, and that's just one that you can actually fill it. With water. Yeah, with water. So it's actually for, um, I think, water paint, water painting or watercolors. Yeah, you can get it at an art store or a cake decorating store, and you can fill it, and you can use it. And it's so easy. You don't have to keep refilling your cup with water or, you know, have a chance of, like, knocking it over on knocking the table. Because, <laughs> you know, some people are clumsy like me. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. <laughs> so there it is. I've attached it to the monkey. So... I have put water where the arm is touching the um, shoulder and also a bit of water where the hand is touching the feet. So at this stage, if you find that things are like not holding together, like if the, the arm, sorry, if the hand keeps coming off the arm or keeps falling down, what you can do is stick a little bit of tissue between that little gap there and um, it will hold it up in place until it dries. Okay. Right. And is this a size that it's not too... Um not too big that you can actually do everything all at once or yeah, you yeah. Can sit and rest. I'm sorry, my nose. No, yeah, you can do the beauty of styrofoam as well is that you don't have to wait for, you know, the, the form or the structure to dry underneath. You can, I did that all in one day. So you can do it, yeah. And even if it's a little bit bigger, you can still do it all in one day. Okay. And how big would you say this, this guy is? From um, good question. He's about maybe four inches, three and a half to four inches tall, I okay. guess. Yeah. Size. Yeah. Okay. And then we've got the his tail. Little, his little tail. So I've made his tail towards the end because um, I still need it. I need it firm, but I also still need it a little bit pliable so that um, when I put it against him, it can still have a bit of movement if I need to adjust. So I've just made it into like a little S shape and I've let it dry slightly. Right. So while it's drying, I made the hair, and the hair is just little pieces of um, fondant that I've rolled into teardrop shapes, and I've stuck them together with the pointy side up. Okay. And then stuck it on top of his head. I love the, the little hair. That's very cute. <laughs> <laughs> And then for his ears, I've rolled out two ball shapes, and I've flattened it. And then with a balling tool, I have indented it. So I, you can see that the ball tool have, is more on one side than on the other, so that, you know, because the skinnier side, I'm actually going to cut off, and the thicker side is going to form the rim of his ear. Okay. That's a really quick and easy way to do an ear. 
Yeah, and then see I've cut off a little bit at the end so that I, I can stick it onto the head. Mm -hmm. And then stick it on with a little bit of water and I've just flattened it a little bit so that it's not like a lump that has come out of his head. It's more like a general, like a gradual piece that's coming out. Mm -hmm. It's very cute. And that's his other ear. So cute. I love how he's holding on to his toes. Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> well, I got this inspiration from a little cartoon I think I saw online somewhere, and it was just too cute. Um, <laughs> so, oh, for his eyes, two black um, pieces of fondant into an oval. Um, I find a lot of times with eyes, people tend to go overboard. It, you always need a lot less than what you think you need. So if you hold it there and it's bulging out, it looks really weird. So what you want to do is have less, but flatten it to make it bigger if you need to, so it comes out just a little bit, but not like bulging. Mm -hmm. And the best thing about once you like this way of placing the eyes is that you'll find that you'll you'll see that when you place them together, he has a different personality. If you put them a bit further apart, he looks different again. So you know, it's everything's a little, uh, everything has a different personality. Yeah, um, I've, either bigger or smaller. Or yeah, yeah, and and if I do it in a class kind of setting, it's really interesting because everyone starts out with the same thing, but at the end, everyone's figurines always have different personalities to it. Uh -huh. Really interesting. Um, here, I've just used the um, AmeriColor white gel paste, and all I've done is dipped the end of a skewer in there, and um, I've dotted it on the eyes just to add some shine to it. And then the skinnier end to add a second dot. And then I've also used a bit of um, petal dust just to give him a bit of a blush. Now with the blush, you want to go easy because it's quite hard to remove if you, if you go too strong. So usually I put it on a paper towel and then I use um, a, a brush, like a puffy brush, and I kind of dip it in the, in, the, um, in the dust. And then I would dust off the extra on the side of the paper towel before I actually go and put it on the face. Because if you do it slowly, it's better than giving him too much at one time. If you give him too much at one time, it is possible to take it off. Like you can wipe it off with water, but it's just a hassle. So it's better to go go easy. Like when you're doing your face, you know, you want to go easy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. All right. And then that's him going into the cake. So you can see how big he is in relation to that cake. That cake is actually a six-inch cake. Okay. So it takes up most of the top of that cake. Um, and you want to insert him in. Now it's better if the skewer, especially if you're planning to do it all out of fondant or gum paste where it's really, really heavy, it's better that that skewer goes all the way down to that bottom of that cake so that mm -hmm. there's no possibility of the figurine sinking. Um, but if you're doing it out of styrofoam, not too bad. You can you know, make, make the skewer long enough so that it will hold. You know, so you want to go halfway down like that, and then we're going to insert the tail. So we're going to insert the tail here. Notice how it goes a little bit under his bum. So a bit of water there, and then the part where it's just about touching his head, I've put a bit of water there so it sticks to the head. So the tail has two anchor points, and it's not just sticking out on its own. That's that's really good because a lot of times tails are <laughs> yeah, they're the first thing that breaks. <laughs> In the transport, you get there and the tail's gone. <laughs> yeah, or someone pokes it. What's that? And you go, no. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> you that will happen. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and there he is. He's all done. And he's so adorable. Thank you. And <laughs> you know this shape that that you learn to do, like this round and oval shape you know, is the basis of a lot of my figurines. So even in the crafty classes, you'll see like when I do my penguins and stuff like that, the body is an oval, uh, the body is a egg shape and then the head is a round, you mm -hmm. know, and I build a lot of my figurines off those kind of shapes. And with this technique that we've done with the styrofoam, you can do a whole bunch of stuff. You can do like little babushka dolls. You can do like big penguins, um, anything really that has that round and ovally shaped body. Very nice. Yeah, and, and like I was saying at the beginning, that having, you, you wouldn't think to have, you know, a, a larger head than the body normally just because, you know, in real life that's not yeah. the way proportions work. But exactly. if you want something really cartoony and cutesy, especially if you want it to look young, you know, yeah. that, that 
big head. <laughs> yeah, makes it look really cute. Yeah, very, very cute. I love it. Thank okay. you. Well, and before we get on to, oh, and there's another angle of him. I yeah. Love the dogs. That just was perfect touch. <laughs> Okay, so before we move on to um, the question and answer, you have shared a recipe with us, which yep. sounds really good. For those of us in America, we'll have to convert the ingredients. Oh, um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> and you know, that kind of, you know, we, we don't have uh, Yeah. Um, I mean, if you love Earl Grey tea, it's really, really yummy. And um, I don't know about, like, you guys, but in Australia, we can get this thing called French Earl Grey which is like Earl Grey, but it's got a bit more of a floral taste to it as well. So um, it's, it's got that Earl Grey taste, but then it's a bit of, you know, ex I don't know how to explain it. It's like it's a bit more sweet because of the floral notes to it. Uh -huh. well, that's, that sounds really good. Yeah, because it was hard. You asked me for a non-cake to dessert recipe, and it's like, oh, well, all I make is cake, so it was a bit of like, <laughs> I know how that goes. <laughs> a lot of times that's all you have time for, especially I know. when you bake. So, yeah. But it does sound really good. And then we have the, have the directions for it. So this is basically like a, a, like a shortbread, shortbread type of... Yeah, cook. or a shortbread recipe. And then um, all you do is um, I put the leaves... I, can, I mean, I kind of blended the leaves in with the butter and stuff, but, you know, so you can see there are chunky pieces of the actual leaves in there. If you don't like, and it does get stuck in your teeth a little bit, but if you don't like that aftertaste of the tea and everything, you could blend it a little bit more fine, you know, um, in the food processor. And all I've done is just roll the dough into logs. I put it in the freezer for a bit, and then as and when I need it, you take, take it out and you just cut it, and then you just bake it, and it's really quick. And they make great gifts too, so. Very nice, yeah. Just make up a roll of it, give it to a friend, and they can make their yeah. cookies whenever they want. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, I meant you could bake it for them, but okay, that too. <laughs> yes, you could bake it for them. <laughs> yeah. Yep, okay, well, they look delicious. Thank you. All right, thank you for sharing that. Okay, so let's uh, move on to our question and answer. I'm going to um, try and find our our questions here. Um, okay, for our first one, it says, uh, I would love to learn how to cover barrel or double height tears. Mm -hmm. So my fondant keeps splitting on the top edge when I cover in the traditional way and wrapping leaves seams. So do you have any tips on that? Wrapping it, sorry, what did you say? So if, it, basically she's saying if she puts the fondant over the traditional mm -hmm. way, it tears. If mm -hmm. she tries to just wrap it around the cake, mm -hmm. it, it leaves seams. Yeah, so you need when you do double barrel cakes, which I get asked really often, is you need to design to suit that shape, you know? So I would hardly ever design a double barrel cake that is completely plain because you're just asking for trouble. So, you know, you design to suit it. So if I usually, the method that I use is to wrap it, and it does have a seam, so it has a seam down one side and a little bit on top. And with that, you need to design. So whether you design stripes or whether if you do striking piping or something like that, um, it takes away a lot of the attention. And with the seam at the little bit at the top, put flowers or something like that. Um, the other option is, you know, if you cover it, top down is to just cover it top down halfway and then you can do like a little bit of a pattern at the bottom that allows you to put another piece around um, because covering it top down although possible it is quite difficult and you have to work really quickly and you have to roll out a ginormous piece of fondant so my preference is to always wrap it and you know a lot of the times if you rub again here and what you do what we did with the monkey if you rub and you use not that much corn flour and you work quickly enough, the seam does tend to disappear most of the time. Um, if not, then you know you, you need to design to hide it. Okay, um, for those of you that are wondering, I forgot to mention this at the start, um, if you guys have any questions, uh, go ahead and type them into the, the chat box down at the bottom. And that's going to be uh, where to uh, to ask the questions there. 
Okay, so um, next question is, can we cover with modeling chocolate rather than with fondant? Um, you can. I typically don't use that much modeling chocolate because I've only started using it in the last year or so um, because I'm a little bit lazy and you have to make modeling chocolate yourself and you can't, not like in the US, in Australia you can't really buy it as is yet. If you could, I'd probably use it more often. Um, but you could cover it, but modeling chocolate doesn't bend around very well. You know, it, it's a little bit more firm, so when you're trying to bend it around things, it's a little bit more stubborn. It doesn't just drape. It tends to hold its shape a little bit more. So um, although I suspect it is possible, it would be quite difficult to cover a whole cake with modeling chocolate. Okay. All right, and then how about your figurines? Do you do mm -hmm. your figurines with modeling chocolate ever? Uh, no, because again, you have to make it, and then you have to make different <laughs> colors. And um, yeah, but it is possible to do it with modeling chocolate, you know, because it is a little bit more firm, mm -hmm. so it won't te it, te it won't like sag or anything like fondant does. So you can do it out of modeling chocolate. But if you were to do something like the monkey, for example, it would be so heavy, especially at that size, you know. So a lot of the times, especially when you're using cakes that have buttercream and things like that inside, it's all very soft. And if you put something really heavy on top, like chances are it has a, it has a tendency to get ripped off the cake or shift onto the cake as well. So if you're doing something like that, then I would suggest putting the figurine on after you get there. Okay. Yeah. All right. And you know, the, the fact that uh, modeling chocolate blends really well, but it looks like your fondant blends really well too. And that kind of leads to a, a few questions. A few people have asked, uh, what is your favorite uh, fondant and gum paste to use? Um, in Australia, I use Bakehouse. So I mainly use Bakehouse for all my covering and things like that. But we got satin ice into the market a couple of years ago, which has been a godsend because previous, like prior to that, we never had different colored fondants, really. So, and then I use satin ice for all my colors. So like red, black. Um, especially the brown. I love the brown because it's a true brown. It's not like when you use um, gel paste um, brown, it turns the fondant a little bit red sometimes. So um, I like the satinized brown because when you tone it down with white, it still gives that brown, which is what I've used for the monkey. Um, and those two are the main brands that I use all the time. We don't, well, I don't really use anything else. All right. Okay, we have another question. Where do you get your inspirations from? Um, a lot of the time is looking online. So when I look, you know, sometimes it's just walking somewhere and I see like a pattern or a print and I thought, oh, that's really cool. Or if I look through, especially like kids' magazines and things like that, and I see, you know, um, a little toy that I think is really cute. You know, for example, like, oh, that little mouse is really cute. And then I'll start Googling, you know, like, mouse cartoons and every time when I google for things I always look for the cartoon version of things because that's when their body shape and stuff is a lot more exaggerated and you can see that when people draw them you can see and you can break it down and go oh that's an egg shape or that's like a cone shape there and you know you can start making it you can see how they place their eyes and and stuff like that and you learn a lot from that too so that's mostly where um, or how it starts really very nice. Yeah, you know, I I constantly think about this, but what would we do without Google? And where, what did we do before I Google? Know. <laughs> I know, and, and recently Pinterest, so. <laughs> oh, yeah, and Pinterest is, you know, it's taken over. And <laughs> I know, I know, and it's, it's amazing. I mean, like, starting out seven years ago till now, like, there's so much stuff available for decorators now that, you know, I never had, and I'm sure people who started 10 years ago never had, and you know, it's amazing to see how we've evolved with all this. Yeah, it is amazing. And we are so lucky to have all of it, you know. Yeah. I, honestly, I think I think a lot of us get most of our inspiration from the Internet, from, you know, from Google or... Yeah, or other decorators or, you know... Other decorators, yeah. And Pinterest yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Sorry about that. Oh, okay. <laughs> someone says we need to send you some modeling chocolate. <laughs> yes, please. I've seen in the way you can buy them in the house. So. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, I'm not seeing any more questions right now. I'm not sure if that's 
my computer being slow or so yeah if you guys have any questions go ahead and ask um, we can if not we can go ahead and move on okay speak now after hold your peace I guess <laughs> all right Okay, we will um, go on and we will talk about what is coming up with you. Um, you have a bunch of classes, a bunch of things, so we wanted to talk about all of that. Uh, so you have just released a Craftsy class, mm -hmm. um, your cake topper techniques for thought of animals. Yeah. And then what's your other, you actually have two classes, so what was your other one? Uh, the other one's the castle cake class. The castle cake, that's right. Yeah, so with that, a lot of people always ask, you know, um, the most common question I get is how you get those sharp edges and things like that. And, you know, it, it is done with ganache um, and that class. Not only does it show you how to do the castle, but in the beginning it shows you how to set up the cake with the ganache and then how to um, sharpen the edges. And basically I just use um, two clear fondant smoothers to sharpen it. And um, it goes through the techniques of, of what, well, not the techniques, but the method of, of how I do it and it's actually a lot of it has to do with the pressure of your hands and once you get it it's like riding a bicycle once you get it you won't forget it so it's a matter of just practicing perfect that sounds like a really good one you know so yeah. it's definitely a good one to, ch to check out and um, someone just asked uh, how large the, the castle is in that. the castle um, the top cupcake is about it's quite big, but the bottom, sorry, the, I'll start from the bottom. The bottom's an 8-inch cake, the middle is a 6-inch cake, and then the top is actually another 6-inch cake that has been carved down and put back into that cupcake shape. Okay. So that, oh, that's another thing you learned from that tutorial as well, is how to carve the cake um, in a slightly different way, because what I do is when we carve it, we actually put back the scraps into the cake. So in a sense, like if you know that cake will serve like, 20 people, you know, by carving and putting it back in, you will still serve that 20 people mm -hmm. as opposed to throwing it away so you have a lot less wastage. Okay, very cool. Okay, and then you have a downloadable tutorial that's on your website, is that right? Yeah, yeah, that just recently came out as well. So it's a 3D Stegosaurus cake tutorial. So it walks you through how to create a, a standing kind of structure and it's quite a simple structure although you do need a drill and a hot glue gun but other than that it's quite a simple structure um, and you know you build it and it teaches you how to do the legs so that it's still got a bit of movement even though obviously there is a dowel in the leg mm -hmm. um, and a bit of airbrushing a bit of a little bit of everything really <laughs> carving um, modeling in there Okay. So that's that's my biggest tutorial yet. It's got over a hundred photos in there, and it's really long. I think it was I can't remember how many pages it is now, but it's quite long. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, that's good. You know, we we like the information. Yeah. <laughs> so, and it it looks like a really cool stegosaurus too. Thank you. And then you have a bunch of classes coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, looks like uh, you have some in. July, September, November, and you're all over the, the world, so... Yeah, this year has just been a little bit crazy. It was never like that last year, and it only started being a bit crazy like that this year. But in July, I'm heading to Indonesia, to Jakarta, with Heavenly Sweet, and then in um, and then after that, I'm heading to Malaysia, to Kuala Lumpur, with um, Buns in the Oven Cupcakery. And then in September, I'm off to Melbourne, with um, Three Sweeties. And November and December, I'm back in London with Fair Cake. And then I'm really excited to announce, because you guys are the first to know, that I'm going to be in the U.S. in October and in December. So in October, it's with Baking Arts, and you can contact them to get placed on the mailing list. Um, the classes are still yet to be decided. And then in December, it's in New York, and with that, you can contact me to be placed on the waiting list. So that will be very exciting. Um, I can't wait, really. Awesome. Well, that sounds like fun. I, yeah. How fun to just, you know, go all over the world and, and just cake. <laughs> it's so fun. <laughs> it's fun until you start realizing you're running out of clean clothes and you haven't had a proper home-cooked meal in a while. 
So. Yeah, I guess that's true. I guess it, it, you know, and teaching, I know a lot of people think, oh, that would be the job, you know, just yeah. just teach all the time. But I, all of us that have taught, you know, that it's a lot of work getting ready for the teaching. You know, you have to oh, yeah, just the there. amount of prep is... It's unbelievable, and then the amount of cakes that a lot of my hosts have to bake is like hundreds, you know, and and I just see them baking day and night, and a lot of the times, you know, they run out of space, like right now I'm in Singapore, and they had to hire in a, uh, like an extra fridge and stuff to, to store all the cakes, and, you know, still they ran out of space, so they can only bake to whatever space they have, and only when we start running the classes and, and depleting the stock, they can start baking again, yeah, so it's it's crazy. Yeah, it, it really is. It really is. So everybody out there that's learning from your teachers, be grateful for them. They do a lot of work. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, we did have somebody ask, uh, ask about what, where is the site for the Stegosaurus tutorial. Um, again, oh, it's on my but, website. Yeah. yeah, and it's under the, um, if you go to the online store section, it's under the online tutorials um, bit under there. So I've got that plus a whole bunch of other stuff as well. Okay. And then the Crafty class, we're going to actually uh, share a link with you guys in just a minute. Um, let's see. And also another place where they can contact you is through Facebook. So you have your Facebook page. Uh, oh, I just put we. It's two E's. I'm sorry. What? And we, we oh, love yes. you. W -E -E because of your last name. Okay. So yeah. W E E love baking uh, on your yeah. Facebook. I'm sorry about messing okay. that up. <laughs> I'm sure they'll work it out. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So so yeah. Go find go find Sharon on Facebook. We W E E love baking, and uh, her her website we love baking dot com. And yeah. Okay. So are you guys ready for the the giveaway? Um, I think there's a little bit of a delay because we've got. A few more questions after I moved on. So oh, okay, no problem. If we have a chance, we'll get to a couple of them <laughs> okay. after we're all done. So we're gonna have to sit and wait for you guys to, to respond. Um, but um, okay, so here's what we're gonna do for the giveaway. We're going to give you guys the the link to go to the Craftsy page through cakeboo.com forward slash Sharon. Okay, so go there. Click on where it says, uh, or the link that says lessons. Um, you'll scroll down a little bit. It says lessons. Click on that. And then I want you guys to type in uh, the second lesson that you find. So we'll give you guys just a minute to go there and find that. So, and while we're waiting, how about we ask one of the questions? Yeah, um, sure. I thought it was a really fun question. Uh, what do you predict as a hot trend for 2014? Um, that's a good one. For wedding cakes, um, I see a lot of like, I don't know, in Australia we kind of get things a little bit behind the US, so if you're asking me based on Australia, I'll just tell you what I've seen in the US, so the rustic thing is really popular at the moment, but in terms of next year I see a lot of textures happening on cake, you know, um, whether it be through not just ruffles, but a lot more like um, lace kind of textures and, and things like that. And then in terms of just other types of cakes in general, I think a lot more structural things now because people are getting a little bit more adventurous, you know, so we're trying to move away from the standard type cakes and we're trying to do more structure, more this and more kind of gravity defying cakes and things like that. I find um, we're moving more towards. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's what I like to see anyway. So yeah, yeah. Anything yeah. for like weddings also, or do you think that? Uh, maybe not so much weddings. I'm hoping that um, a bit more color. People will be, especially in Australia, people will be a bit more adventurous with color. Um, people are still doing bursts here and there, but not bold colors like you see in in the U.S. as yet. So I'm hoping they'll be a bit more adventurous. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. It's it's very interesting to see the difference between you know the U.S. and you know like Australia or the U.K. We yeah we have different trends that are going on, so it's not a worldwide thing necessarily. No, I mean sometimes we get influenced here and there because you know all the like wedding blogs and things like that are all 
basically worldwide now. Um, so, you know, if brides see something from the U.S. and they bring it to us, and that's kind of how we get influenced as well. So, yeah. Okay. I forgot to make that large for you guys. Okay, we do have, we do have our um, winner. We're just going to take the first one, since I didn't say who was going to be the winner. So it would be, oh, I'm not sure who it is. It's guest number 17. <laughs> so um, I guess guest 17, if you can let me know your name and, <laughs> we will, and your email address, we will uh, give that information to you on how to claim your, uh, claim your free crossing class. So congratulations. And for those of you that didn't win, make sure you head on over there and check out Sharon's crafty class and, and even her, her other one, your other one. Uh, that's, you know, the, the castle one sounds really great too. So. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Sharon, for coming and, and joining us today, and especially for getting up so early in the morning. <laughs> thank you. That's all right. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and thank you, everybody, who came uh, and, and joined us. Uh, I, and thanks to all the, the new people, all the people that have been with us from the start. You guys are awesome. And uh, it, if you guys aren't friends with us on Facebook, um, go ahead and find us on Facebook. We're uh, Cake Foo, just, just Cake Foo on Facebook. And uh, I, I uh, started a comment, or a, I, I guess I made a comment on there. I'm going to start calling you guys my CFFs, my Cake Foo friends. <laughs> I like that. I think that'll be kind of fun. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, again, thank you so much, and we will see you guys all next time. Thank you. Bye. Bye.